A major US client approached us with an urgent request. Create a full brand identity in just three days using AI tools. This client appreciates our design work and sees potential for a partnership. It's an opportunity to enter the US market and scale our design agency business. The challenge is significant. While we've used AI for branding before, this project requires a much deeper application. The client also wants the design to be highly repeatable. We need to uh, provide instructions Instructions, prompts and reference images so they can independently create graphics for social media. My expertise lies in design, processes and negotiations, not sales. Our current clients are mostly outside the US, acquired through word of mouth. We suck at acquisition and this client is our chance to change that. But we had two options, decline the tight deadline but maintain contact for future opportunities or accept the challenge. Success could lead to a valuable partnership while failure might result in losing the client entirely. I chose to accept the project. OneCraft AI, our new client, specializes in implementing enterprise AI tools and training employees. They needed a brand identity that's professional enough for enterprise clients, yet vibrant enough to stand out. The real challenge? Creating a design system that's easily replicable. OneCraft AI wants to produce professional-looking content for LinkedIn, posts, carousels, graphics, without relying on designers. Our solution? Develop an identity tightly integrated with Midjourney. We're not just creating a brand we're generating a style. Our goal was to impress the client with both quality and speed. The quality part, we nailed it. The speed, that's where things got interesting. I wanted to promise the client we'd deliver in five days. That's our sweet spot for uh, complex identities. But reality hit, overlapping vacations, urgent projects. I had to stretch it to a couple of weeks. The first week flew by, no progress. But then came day one of our actual work time, nothing. We couldn't start. One day gone, 20% of our core time vanished. I jumped in myself. I'm not the studio's strongest uh, designer. That's Nozick. He's our creative powerhouse. Uh, but he wasn't figuring out his time and I was getting nervous. Sometimes you got to roll up your sleeves, even if you're not the best person for the job. It was more gut instinct than, than strategy. Customer trust is everything. Better to deliver something good than nothing perfect. Felt like the story was ending before it began. Our great was becoming good enough. I thought about pulling Nosik off the project, but held off. Maybe he'd pull through. Then it got worse. Day two of our core time, still nothing. 40% of our actual working time, gone. The thought of taking Nosik off the project grew stronger. While waiting for Nosik to jump in, I started designing. Not ideal, but hey, time's ticking. First attempt, humanity focused, vibrant purple and orange, easy to replicate. We're not big on color psychology in our studio, but context is king. I liked it, but kept exploring. Second try, 3D, Apple-esque style, blending digital and reality. We dubbed it Lufa Ladder. It looked good, maybe even better than the first. Third option, retro theme with abstractions. Easier to generate, we called it Retro Prism. Trendy, not timeless, but we're aiming for good, not revolutionary here. I sent all three to Xenia, our art director, and another design powerhouse, and Nosik for feedback. Didn't tell Nosik he might be off uh, the project yet. I wanted to see if any options passed our internal quality check first. Xenia's take. Orange one's colors are muddy, forms disconnected. Lufa is overused but interesting. Third option's cool, needs work though. Nosik chimed in. First is dystopian, faceless, more anti-AI than human touch. Second's Apple-like, nice but boring. Third option, that's the winner. His enthusiasm was contagious. I'm on it, got ideas, Nosik said. Let's develop it together. Try a lighter version. Think about applications. I'll sketch ideas, then we'll call. After that message, cancelling Nosik's involvement? No way. He's our creative ace. With this energy, we might just pull off something great. Finally, we're in motion. Dream Team assembled Nosik, our creative ace, Xenia, our sharp-eyed art director, and me, juggling design and project management. It felt like we could conquer the world, or at least nail this project. I dove back into my three options, determined to evolve them. Option one, humanity-focused. I hope the text context would save it from dystopia. Spoiler, it didn't. But adding white to the color scheme. Now we're talking. I toyed with wavy lines for unity and depth, promising, but not quite there. Option two, our 3D loofah. Posts looked great when overlapped. The website's first screen, absolutely killer. Bonus, it vibed with Microsoft's AI tools aesthetic. Considering our client's Copilot integration work, this felt like a win. Option three, retro prism. Didn't push it brighter yet, uh, just applied as is. Posts, nailed it. 
website hit a wall. Why am I detailing all three? Because in design, every exploration matters. Each dead end and breakthrough shapes the final result, especially in this story. Time's slipping away. No six silent. I'm pushing forward, but it's like running in quicksand. The orange design needs a complete overhaul, but there's no time and no guarantee it'll even help. The 3D loofah, too abstract. One image looks cool, but a whole brand, it's form over function. The first screen sings, but the rest, radio silence. I need a breather, so I edit a video about AI for our channel. Talk about our client, showcase our design draft. It's just an illustration, right? The clock ticks louder in my head. I'm grasping at straws, convinced we're close. Just need more specifics, I think. Generate more and we'll crack it. But deep down, doubt gnaws at me. Then it hits me. No sick. I completely forgot about him. No messages, time running out, and I've been too caught up in this video to even check in. We're not just in a cave, we're in quicksand and it's rising fast. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, they did. My phone buzzed, a message from the client. Shit, what have I done? I'm so stupid. Why did I do it? Wow, that design in your video looks amazing. Did you feature it on purpose? My heart sank. He loved it. The Lufa design. The one we'd already dismissed. The one I accidentally leaked in that damn video. This isn't a win. It's a disaster. I just shot ourselves in the foot. Twice. First, by showing unfinished work. That's design 101. You don't do it. Second, I'd locked the client's expectations onto the wrong design. Any other concept we show now, it'll be fighting an uphill battle. We're not just starting from zero, we're starting from negative. YouTube might be new to me, but that's no excuse. I screwed up, big time. My only hope, that Nozick had pulled the rabbit out of his hat, a design so good it'd make the client forget all about the loofah. Then Nozick's message popped up. My last hope evaporated as I read, can't make it work, everything's coming out average. I've tried a hundred variations, nothing clicks. Let's brainstorm together, you're better at mid-journey. We need something more concrete, 3D, geometric. We were right back where we started, no groundbreaking design. Just the pressure to deliver something, anything, and fast. But stop, full stop. We've been banging our heads against mid-journey's limitations, obsessing over references and prompts. But what if we're looking at this all wrong? I ping Nozick, 10 minute call, now. On the call, a memory hits me. A past project where we made these ugly ducks for a site, on their own, uh, terrible. But in context, they worked beautifully. Why? We framed them right. This sparks an idea. We're not designing for mid-journey. We're designing period. What if we ditch the AI constraints and cherry-pick the best parts of each concept? New plan. Uh, forget finding the perfect mid-journey visual. Instead, let's mash up all our cool metaphors. Take the best, ditch the rest. Create a cocktail of our top ingredients. Sure, we know mid-journey's quirks, Hell, we even wrote a Gumroad course on its designer-specific weaknesses. But that's not the point right now. No six ideas, scrap the prompts, keep the imagery and metaphors. Technically, we came up with uh, nothing new, but the energy completely shifted. Suddenly, we both felt it. We're gonna crack this. And crack it, we did. Hours later, Nosik shows me something that blows my mind. Uh, color scheme from version one, but brighter. Smooth abstractions from the Lufa, creating the fluid vibe we wanted. Motion blur and real objects from the retro option, adding depth without breaking style. The secret sauce, corrugated glass effect in Figma, consistent everywhere, plus some noise for that retro feel tying everything together. Oh, and that logo we'd been ignoring, suddenly it just clicked, a cool recognizable mark born from our new direction. To top it off, Nosy crafted a dark theme, because why not? It worked like a charm. I'm over the moon. We've got a cohesive style, a striking image, flexibility to use any object or person without breaking the vibe. And the client can generate visuals within this framework, always staying on brand. We didn't just solve a problem, we created a whole new playing field. We've got our design, it's brilliant. But will it be enough? Time's nearly up and I can't get the client on a call. It's Friday. Do we break our own rule and send it without a proper presentation? Or wait till Monday and risk seeming unprofessional? We decide to go for it. But not just with slides. We need something extra. I draft the text, then run it through Claude for a polish. And then Claude spits out a poem, an AI hallucination, maybe. But it's good, really good. My inner poet sees potential. Then a crazy idea hits me. What if we generate a song using Suno AI for our presentation soundtrack? It works, it's not just good, it's fantastic. Unusual, catchy, detailed. It's everything we want to be for our clients. This could be our saving grace. After my screw up with the video leak, we need all the help we can get. Our incredible design and this wild soundtrack idea might just even the odds. We hit send, then wait. The longest minutes of my life. The client reads it. Uh, five minutes pass. 
he tags uh, the chief of marketing. My heart's in my throat. The main decision maker hasn't said a word himself. Then finally, a message pops up. This is fucking awesome. Relief floods through me. But is this the end of our journey or just the beginning of a new challenge? We've created something extraordinary, a crown jewel for our portfolio. We've forged a relationship with a new client, potentially opening doors to the US market. And we've pushed our AI integration further than ever before. But personally, I've rediscovered something I thought I'd lost, the taste of design. For years, I've been the strategist, the manager, the theorist. My practical design skills, rusty at best, I didn't even think to test them. My theoretical game was strong, so why bother? This project changed everything. It thrust me back into the designer's seat, forcing me to create, to struggle, to innovate. And you know what? I loved it. The pride I felt in my work was intoxicating. But here's the real kicker, watching Nozick take my ideas and elevate them to new heights. That was even better. It reminded me why I love leading a team. We're not just individuals, we're a design ecosystem, each of us pushing the others to greater heights. This project wasn't just about creating a brand identity, it was about um, rediscovering our own identity as designers, as a team, as innovators. We set out to impress a client. We ended up reimagining ourselves. And that 72-hour challenge, it wasn't a constraint, it was a catalyst. Pretend 